Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so in the last video, we completed our application, we built out the logic, we created all the components that we needed, and now in this video, we are gonna go ahead and make our application look pretty. Because right now it looks rather hideous. Okay, so <clears throat> how do you work with CSS in a React file? Well, the very first thing that I want you to do is I want you to install Bootstrap into your project. And I'm using Bootstrap because I'm going to use the grid system to put these the, the title components and the weather component side by side. So to do that, type in npm, staying in your project folder, npm install Bootstrap and I'm also going to add a version number. So I'm going to say 3.3.7 dash dash save. What this command is going to do is it's going to put bootstrap into your package.json file. And the reason I'm using bootstrap 3.3.7 is because it's the stable release. Bootstrap 4 is still in beta and that's why I've chosen to go with bootstrap 3. Okay, once you have pressed enter, let us do its thing, and once Bootstrap is, is, is installed, go back to your text editor. Back in index.js file, this is where we are going to import the Bootstrap dependency. So just above where we import the app for app.js file, I'm going to import the Bootstrap file. So what this is doing is drilling down into the node modules, and then it's finding the bootstrap dependency, and then it's going all the way to where this bootstrap.min.css file lives. Okay, so if I press save, immediately there's a change in the UI. So the serifs are gone, the inputs look different, and the button looks very different as well. Okay, so now this is bootstrap. How do we add our own custom CSS? So back in app.css, I already have all the styles that I'm going to need for this project. So I'll be sure to link this in the video description as well as this background image that I'm going to be using. So I will link these two items in the video description so you guys can download them and use them. Okay, so now to import my custom CSS, I'm going to go ahead Underneath this bootstrap import, I'm going to type import and then the relative path, so it's app.css. Now, if I press save, it's going to apply some of the basic stylings, but it's still far from where we want it to be. So, what's next? Well, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add classes to our components that have been defined in the app.css file. So how do you do that? Well, first up, let's start with the app.js file. So right there where we return all the components all together, I'm first going to cut these all out and I'm gonna paste them there, okay? So right there, I'm just gonna throw in some class names. So I'm gonna say wrapper and then this wrapper is going to contain a main class and then the main class is going to contain a container div which is a bootstrap class and then within that container div I'm going to say I'm going to put in a row class which is another bootstrap class so if now I if, if now if I press control e on my keyboard the extension called emmet is going to put this structure right in front of me now, if you are used to using the tab key to expand your emmet uh, commands, then it may not work in JSX files. It works in HTML files, but in JSX, in React, you have to use Control E to expand your emmet commands, okay? So now in this row class, I'm gonna throw in something called columns. Now Bootstrap provides you with a 12 column layout. So I'm gonna divide this into five columns and seven columns between the two major components that we need. So for the five columns, it's going to be on the left-hand side. So what do we need on the left-hand side? 
is the title. So I'm going to say call xs5 and I'm also going to give it a class of title-container. So within there, I'm going to go ahead and put this titles component. So if I go ahead and save this. Okay, so this is the five of the 12 columns that Bootstrap provides us with. Next up, we're going to make use of the remaining seven columns that we have. So I'm going to say call xs7 and I'm also going to give it a custom class, which is form container. And if you want to know if you want to know what these classes are doing, just go to app.css and this is the title container class. This is the form container. So if you want to know what these classes are doing, just have a look at the styling and you'll find out. OK, back in app.js, I'm going to cut and paste these two components. So just like so. And I'm going to tap this in. So what this is doing is it's telling React to put the titles component on the left hand side, give it a width of five columns, and on the right hand side, I want the form and the weather component and give this a width of uh, seven columns. So if I press save, let's see what we get back in the web browser. Okay, so it looks much different now. So as you can see, this is the five column layout that the titles is taking up and then Within there, we have the form component, and if I type in the name of the city and the country, I get this um, this weather component. So it's still not perfect. So let's see what we can do next. So the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to style the title component. So more specifically, these two titles right there. So open up your titles.js file, and Right there, give this a class of title container underscore underscore title. But this class is not going to work because class is already a reserved keyword in JavaScript. So, if, so we cannot use this class attribute in JSX. We can use this in HTML, sure. But to assign classes in JSX, you need to use the keyword class name. Okay, this is how we tell React that it's not this class keyword, it's not this one, it's an actual class name that we want to assign. Okay, so next up, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to paste this right there and I'm going to change this to subtitle. Okay, let's hit save and take a look. So there we go, we had the styling down for the titles. Okay, next up. So the input styling is already there, so we don't need to touch it. So the only thing that's left now is the actual weather component. So let's go ahead and style this. Now, open up the weather.js file. And the very first thing I've done here is I've given this div a class of weather info. So go ahead and do that because this is the wrapper div. And now we're going to assign various classes to these JavaScript expressions and these paragraphs right there. So I'm just going to be a bit more careful because it's a bit of a complicated structure. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split these into multiple lines just so it's easier to work with. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so once this is done, I'm also going to go ahead and split the paragraph um, and the expression into multiple lines. Because this paragraph is going to have a class, and then I'm going to wrap these values into a span tag because I'm going to give this a class as well, just to differentiate the colors. So the, loca the, so these look, the location, these are obviously the keys. So these are going to be a different color, and then these values I'm going to wrap them into the span tags and give it a give them a class and these are going to contain and these are going to have a different color. Okay? So now I'm going to also do the same for the rest of them. So let's just go ahead and break this down into separate lines. 
come on. Cut that, put that into a span tag. Put it there and do the same right there. New line and cut this out, put it into a span tag. Paste it there. Conditions, cut this out. And span and paste it there. And we don't really need a span for this because it's just an error, so we can leave it there as it is. Okay, next up, let's actually go ahead and add classes to this. So, this paragraph tag is going to contain a class called weather underscore underscore, I believe it's key. Yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut all this and paste it into all of these paragraphs that I'm using. Okay, weather underscore underscore key. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening. So, Manchester, UK, get weather. And as you can see, this red color is being applied to everything that's inside of this paragraph. So, this is why we're using the span tag to make the values a different color. So, the values are going to be the color white. Okay? So to do that, let's just go ahead and copy this class name, paste it in the span tag, and change this to value. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of these, and I'm going to paste it into each of the span tag in this file. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this now. So city, Manchester, UK, get weather, and there we go. But it's a bit off because I expect there to be a some sort of space. So let's see what's happening there. Uh, hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a space into each of these span tags. So let's see if that works. Manchester, UK, get weather. There we go, perfect. So let's see how the error looks. So if I leave these values blank and press the get weather, so I'm gonna give this weather a uh, this error a class of weather underscore underscore error. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, brilliant. So I want to let you know that I have not added the styles for smaller screens. So currently this web app is not responsive. But if you want to add any media queries, just go ahead. I've named these class names very appropriately so you guys know what's going on. And if you want to know what these classes are, so title dash container underscore underscore subtitle, this is something called BEM naming methodology. Now, if you don't know what BEM is, just go ahead and Google it. But it's nothing to do with React or JavaScript. It's just a naming convention in CSS. So this is what I'm following in this file. So if you want to add any media queries, just feel free to do it. But this is it for this project, so I really hope you learned something from it. And if you did, please do let me know. And if you want, to, if you want me to create something, something else or some more of these API tutorials or maybe some more React or JavaScript tutorials, then do let me know and I'll be very happy to do that. So again, thank you very much for watching these tutorials and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.